In today's video, I'm gonna be future-proofing this original Xbox by removing the troublesome clock capacitor. So I bought this Xbox a couple of weekends ago at a car boot sale. If you're American and maybe unfamiliar with the concept of a car boot, it is kind of similar to what you might call a flea market. People will put their stuff in their car and come to typically a field to sell it from there. And I did find this Xbox on a bit of tarpaulin on the floor and it was a bit dirty as it had been raining the night before as we are in England. Um, but I decided to rescue it and bring it home and to be honest xboxes are quite common to find at car boot sales i do typically see at least a few every week and the price tends to hover around 10 pound which is exactly what i paid for this one for those that don't know, the original Xbox is prone to a serious issue. In certain versions, the clock capacitor is known to leak, causing irreversible damage to the motherboard. So for people with an original Xbox, take note and remove that capacitor before it's too late, like I'm about to do to mine now. So let's get started. So just before I start, I did think it'd be best to check that the console actually works. So I've just loaded up Halo here, as you can see, and everything seems to be working fine. Although I have got the controller out here and it is a bit ridiculous. I know they call it the Duke, but I don't know who thought it'd be a good idea to make a controller this size. I mean, it is almost the size of my head and very difficult to use. Okay, the first thing I need to do is remove the case on this. So I've just flipped it over and I can already see it looks like the Xbox has lived a bit of a life. There's multiple different stickers on here from when it's sold. It seems to have been sold for $89.95. And there's even a pat test sticker on here from Cash Converters um, from sometime in 2005. There's also a big caution, do not open warning as well. That seems to indicate that I'm going to be electrocuted if I try and modify the Xbox, but I'm not heeding that warning. Instead, I am going to open it up. And the way to do that is there is six different Torx screws on here, um, four of which are under these feet. I lift one of those up you can see there and two others are under these stickers and I can feel around for them and I've got my Torx 20 screwdriver I'm not going to bore you with this entire process I'm going to remove those screws take the case off and then I'll see you when it's done I will say that was a bit of a mare, um, a lot more difficult than I initially thought it was going to be. I did attempt with the Torx screwdriver and I was getting absolutely nowhere. Literally, the screws were not budging at all. So I had to resort to a power tool, my powered screwdriver, which did make it light work. So I can just pull these screws out now and start with this one. And I was these are the longest screws that I have ever seen in a console. Definitely let me know in the comments if you've seen any longer than this. Um, but I'm just going to carry on taking them out. Like I said, there's only six in here, so it should be pretty easy. I've got the last one under here, and then I can just flip the console over. So I've just turned the Xbox round so the DVD drive is facing me, and I can just remove the case like this, and it should come straight off like that, and I'll put that over there. You can see here I've got the DVD drive and the hard drive, which both need to be removed so that I can get to the motherboard. So to remove these, I only need to remove three Torx 10 screws. So I've got one here, one down there, and then one over this side as well. Now that I've removed those three Torx screws, I can remove the DVD drive and the hard drive as well. So I'm gonna start with the hard drive here. And first off, just gently remove this ribbon cable. Then I can unhook these cables here. And then this should come straight out like that i'll put that over there for now now the dvd drive should be quite easy to just lift up like that and now that I can see the motherboard, it is a good time to check what version number this Xbox is, as that will be useful in locating the clock capacitor later. So I've found this website that has various different methods of identifying the version number of an Xbox. And as I can now see the video chip, I'm gonna be using the video chip verification. Um, so the video chip is just up here near the top of the Xbox, and I can see it has focus written on it, which looking at the chart says, that the Xbox is either version 1.4 or version 1.5. I have access to the motherboard now, and I will say it only took nine screws to get to this point. If only modern consoles were this simple to open. Um, but the next step now is to actually get the motherboard out. And to do that, I'm going to have to remove these cables. So I'm going to start over here with this one, which is the DVD drive ribbon cable. Just pull that one and this one out. And then I have this one, which is the left front port cable. Um, so 
remove that. And then I can do the power cable, just making sure to not get my hand over the power supply. Um, so that one's out. And then the cable here, which I think is for the buttons at the front. Pull that one, it's stuck, there we go. And then this one, which is the right front port cable, which is a bit trickier to get to. If I pull that, there we go. And then finally, the one at the back for the fan. Now that I've unplugged all those cables, the next step to get the motherboard out is to remove the motherboard screws. And I've counted, I think there's nine Torx 10 screws in here. So I'm gonna get to removing all of them. So I've just removed those nine screws that I mentioned before, and I've realized there's actually two more screws up here that I need to remove. So I'm gonna start that now. I initially thought that they were just part of the video connector, but I've realized that they are connecting it to the motherboard. And now those two are out, I can finally actually lift this up. So I'm gonna just gently pull this out. I've just moved the Xbox case out the way and I've got the motherboard here. And the next step is to find out which of these capacitors is the clock capacitor. So as I mentioned before, from looking at the video chip, I've already worked out what version this Xbox is and it seems to be a version 1.4 or 1.5. And that information will help me with finding out where the capacitor is. So I found this very useful website here and I will leave a link to it in the description, but it has information and also some pictures of the various different positions that the clock capacitor can be in and looking at it here it looks like my one or my motherboard is similar to this one here which is from version 1.2 to 1.4 so I assume the version of the Xbox I've got is a 1.4 and if I compare the image to the motherboard it looks like the capacitor is this one near the bottom here um, so now that I've identified the correct capacitor the next step is to get it removed I've had a bit of a look online and I've noticed that there is a few different methods that people use to remove the clock capacitor. One of those is to just sort of wiggle it and try and snap it off. Another one is to actually cut the legs to remove it. But today I want to do a clean removal and take it off in one piece. So I'm going to be desoldering it. And to do that, I've got my desoldering gun here set to 380 degrees C. And I've also just prepped the legs a little bit. So I've added some flux and also some fresh solder, which will hopefully make it easier as I know how stubborn some of these old components can be. So I'm gonna grab my desoldering gun. If I make a start, I'll start on this one and just hold it on for a few seconds. Take that side off and the second side and try and get as much solder off as I can. So if I give it a pull now, it is definitely loosened in there. I'm gonna just heat up the legs, try and heat up the legs with my soldering iron and give it a pull again and see if that helps release it. So if I start on this side, yeah, that leg is already coming out. Yeah, oh, there we go. And the clock capacitor is removed. Okay, that was a bit touch and go at points, but it got there in the end and the clock capacitor is removed. I have it here. Um, so now all that's left to do is reassemble the Xbox and give it a test. So as I have mentioned before, I have a lot of my lesson from past experiences about reassembling things fully before testing. So I have just partly put this back together, but it is ready to test. So I'm gonna turn it on now. We should get, oh, we have the loading screen up so it all seems good at the moment I'll just wait for it to load and I have swapped the controller out for one of a bit more of a reasonable size here so we'll wait for this oh and there we go it has loaded into the normal menu screen so everything seems to be working well so I hope you enjoyed seeing me future-proof this Xbox by removing the clock capacitor. I probably will do some more maintenance on it in the future, recapping it and also adding some new thermal paste where needed. Definitely let me know if you have any other recommendations for future modifications I could do. And also I'd love to know in the comments your favorite original Xbox games. But that's all for today, I'll see you next time. And I'm off to play a bit of Halo.